This is Scott Bakanson, Vice President for Training and Development with Cardinal Basketball Officials Association, IBO Board 255. And today we're going to talk about the mentoring and official relationship and some guidelines that we can put in place to help us uh, as you become a mentor, maybe you've been a mentor and you're just looking for some other uh, ideas or areas that you can improve on. So, uh, you know, the first thing is, you know, when I get a call from somebody and says, well, what does it entail to be a mentor? Um, you know, I ask them, well, what do you think it means? And so a lot of them is I get questions back. Uh, I guess it just means showing them the ropes, answering questions, observing games, teaching development, taking phone calls, and all that's true. Um, but it's a lot more than that. It's, you know, it, it's a little bit deeper than that. So get kind of get into some misconceptions here. First of all, um, some things that I've heard is, you know, I'm not going to chase anybody down. They're going to have to call me. Um, you know, they, they have to make the investment. You know, they have to make time for my schedule. If they want to learn, they need to take the initiative. Uh, well, my phone didn't ring. Uh, and I told him not to do it, but he did it again. And or she's just not getting it. And those are some things that... You know, if I, if I hear, you know, things like that, and, I, and I'm not saying that I'm uh, not necessarily innocent of some of these in my past, but, you know, not chasing anybody down or they need to make the initiative, they need to do this, uh, it's not necessarily conducive for a strong mentor official relationship. Not everybody is wired like that. Not everybody's extroverted like that. Some people are, are intimidated. Look, some of, some of our officials are very accomplished officials, state officials, college officials. Um, to pick up the phone and call somebody and ask them for help is some can be very intimidating. So if you have that thought that, look, you know, they have to come to me and I'm not chasing them down, um, then maybe mentoring is not the right fit for you. And that's okay. Um, but I, I would like for people that are willing to go a little bit above and beyond uh, when it comes to mentoring. So... Um, you know, there, there's some correct ways to communicate, but I think the most important thing, the golden rule, you know, t- treat others how you want to be treated. If you were going to be mentored, and maybe some of you were mentored, um, you know, what did you like? What didn't you like? You know, how would you want to be mentored if you were in their shoes? Be empathetic to them. It's it's really important for them. So, you know, realize that this may be the the most important year or two. That they're going to face and you're going to help them and guide them along the way. Um, I would ask that we reach out first. And look, if you reach out multiple times and they still don't respond, I get it. Then I don't want you to chase them. I wouldn't chase them either. But we need to do their first reaching out. I think that's important and it helps open up the door. Um, Effective listening is really important. Uh, Steve Gordon is probably the most effective listener I've ever heard um, and has this ability to be able to communicate with our officials that he could basically tell them, wow, you sucked that game, and they walk out feeling really good about themselves. But he does it in a way that it is uh, very positive. And sometimes that, that's just a gift in itself. So, um, you know, being an effective listener, asking questions, um, and seeking help or guidance are really in piece, in important pieces. The rules of engagement is also important for you uh, as a mentor. Listen, you have to set those up. You know, you're going to be busy at work. You're going to be busy with family. Um, You're going to have certain times. You might, it might be, hey, look, send me an email because I just can't take calls at work. Or um, I'd prefer if you sent me, uh, you know, a text or, you know, call me during these hours, whatever it is. Set those rules of engagement up so it makes more sense. Um, I think this is the biggest thing that comes about with being a mentor. And I've learned a lot about this in my professional life. Everyone has different cognitive learning styles. You know, if you're going to ever teach or train anybody, you have to understand that everybody has a different cognitive learning style. Most people, you know, can be visual learners or, or are visual learners, but they're auditory learners. They have to be told. They have to, you know, hear things. Uh, kinesthetic learners. Th- those are people that have to do them. They have to touch them. They have to. They have to go out and participate to help them learn. So whether it's watching video or working games on the court, rules quizzes. Uh, maybe even listening to speakers, uh, watching huddle videos, watching YouTube videos. There's lots of different ways that officials can learn. So I think it's really important. Sometimes you might just want to come out and ask, hey, do you know what kind of cognitive learning style you prefer? 
they might not even know what you're talking about. So you you go through it. Hey, do you need to see things? Do you need to hear things? Do you want to? Do you have to work them so you can kind of be part of them? Um, and and some of them might be all three, and that's okay. But I think it's important for us to understand that. You know, we might be teaching them visually, but they may be kinesthetic. So it's not really impacting them uh, as well as it could be as if we went out and did it with them. Um, you know, so what are some of the ways that others mentor now? Well, you know, some people I know have weekly conversations. Uh, there's even one mentor that has a weekly conference call during the season. You know, what what did you see? What did you, how did it go this week? What were some of the plays that gave you troubles? Um, you know, how do you manage those? Um, I, I know that, like, Irv, as an example, does rules quizzes with a bunch of officials and bigger groups. Um, you know, watching game videos is important. Working out together. I think that's a big thing that, that's starting to take place. I've, I've heard of officials going out with their mentors to local high school, working on their, their sprinting and working on their uh, overall endurance to, to help them uh, get ready for the season. Um, going out and working games together, not just rec games, but also you know maybe some of the scholastic games in the fall or the spring or the summer. Um, observing each other. Go out and watch them, but have them come out and watch you it, or watch it on video. Those are some things that you can do. Um, also, getting out outside of the, the normal lines of a gym. You know, go grab coffee, grab lunch, you know, happy hour. You know, if you guys golf together, go golf together. You know, whatever it is that you can spend some extra time with somebody, you know, if, if I get four hours in a golf cart with somebody, I, I trust that they're going to learn a lot and they're going to have an opportunity uh, to be able to take that information and make it useful. Um, you know, but the other thing is you also want to keep it in small bunches. Game video is a big piece, um, and if you're not using Huddle, and you need to learn how to because you can take one of their videotapes, you can put down notes, you can put down different uh, pieces, you know, in this video here, this is uh, Chantal Thomas, uh, one of our young up-and-coming uh, officials. And this is at SCP this summer. This player here, if we rolled the video, which this is just a, a, a screenshot, but Blue 11 gets away with a push. And instead of just telling her, hey, you missed it, I'm trying to explain to her why. She's in good position in here because she's at the top of the key extended, but she needs to step wide, and, and she ended up stepping down towards the basket which is the old line school of thinking. If she steps wide, she'll be able to keep her angle integrity better and would probably have a better chance of getting this. By staying here, she's more focused on the shooter, the boxing out of the shooter, which is important. Uh, anything basket interference, goaltending, air balls, whatever happens up here. But she missed out on the primary responsibility after the ball is released, which is here. So we want to make sure we focus on you know helping them and guide them the right way. Tell them to take notes. Look, if they write it down, they're, they're more likely to retain that information. Sometimes ask for a third party to join. Hey, you know, look, uh, why don't you bring your, the official you're mentoring over to my house tonight? We'll get some pizza and some beers, and we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, and I would focus on the areas of improvement. You know, it might be, you know, hey, your lead is too shallow, or you're moving towards the play as lead as there's a drive to the basket. You need to stay wide and keep your angle. Um, and show them, hey, look, you did it again, and look, you did it again. Or look, hey, wow, you didn't do it that time. You're, you're, you're picking it up now. Good. So those are some things that are, are really important for you to be able to provide them uh, some focus. And then, you know, be objective, but also be consistent and fair. Um, you know, it isn't a beat-up session, although sometimes it, it can turn into be one or they, they can feel like it's one. Sometimes they might walk away going, God, did I do anything right? Um, and while we're not looking to pat them on the back or looking for officials that only want pats on the back, we are trying to provide them some consistent and objective feedback. You know, be a leader. You know, make sure that we're doing things the right way. Show them the right way. If you're going to go out and work games, work them the right way. You know, if you are going to work a, a two- or three-game set, just do things the right way. The switches, the rotations, the mechanics, the reporting, everything just how it would be if it was a scholastic game. If you're not going to do that, you're really not helping them. You're teaching them how to cut corners, and that's not really helping us. Um, and if you're out there doing six or seven games and say, well, we'll do them during the first and the seventh game, that doesn't really help them either because you're teaching them the right way, and you say, okay, now now here's how you really cut corners. So let's let's get away from that. Um, you know, and, and look to help. We're not looking to, to hurt them. We're trying to provide them the right path so that they can do things the right way, which means that we need to lead by example. 
Um, we can also offer alternative solutions. Hey, you know, uh, uh, Gil Mack does a really good job of working uh, the lead in two-person uh, games. Go work some rec games with, with Gil and just see how he does it. Whatever it is that might make sense. Um, again, invite other mentors uh, and then team mentor together. Maybe there's you know three or four different people. You have relationships with people that are mentors. Get together and do it together. So, and if you need help, ask for it. Not everybody uh, has all the right answers, but you know if, if I need help, I I have a few people that I go to. You know, hey, how would you respond to this? Um, and I think the last piece here is we don't want you to overextend yourself. Um, you know, three or less individuals is probably what we're looking for until you're ready. Um, you know, some people can do more, and that's fine, and they're great at it. Um, you know, I'm mentoring 350 plus officials, so uh, not specifically the way that you'd be mentoring them, but it's it's really important that we we don't overextend ourselves and that we get help and we ask for help. So um, set expectations and boundaries with the officials that you're mentoring. Um, you need to have boundaries for your own personal life. They can't be calling you at 10 o'clock at night. Um, you know, you need to be able to, to work on that. Um, know your limitations and don't be a know-it-all. If they call you up and they ask you about a play, you know, hey, I had this play where uh, the, the ball was passed into the front court, hit off of A2's foot and came back into the back court, and A1 grabbed it. What do you, What is it? All right, well, we all know that that's back court, but if for some reason we have a brain cramp or we just don't know the answer, so you know what? That's a great play. Let's look it up together. You don't have to know the answer. Um, and sometimes you can talk too much and you, they get tuned out. So let's be careful of that as well. And if you need help with you know camp ideas or if you have a disagreement with somebody or how to manage a certain process, you know get help with that. Um, but just remember that what you're doing is training them how to become a future mentor. So. Um, you know, eventually they're going to give back. This is a big cycle that we're doing. So um, the fact that you're being part of the cycle um, is really important for their development. And you'll find out that, you know what, all of a sudden you're going to start remembering how to do things the right way because you're mentoring and teaching somebody the right way. So uh, I want to say thank you, and, and we really appreciate you stepping up and being a mentor. And hopefully this brief presentation gave you some guidelines that will help you uh, down the path of, of being a mentor. So thanks again and have a great year.